Hi guys. Remember my junk build router, which I made out of old parts? And then before that I made an APU2 custom router. Um, just to finish off this sort of series, I think I'll make an old PC into a router, because I think that's probably a bit more like what most people are going to do. Um, and this is my old Media Center PC, HDPC. It's an Intel i3-2100 with 4 gigabytes of RAM. That's actually quite a nice power for a router. It's relatively low power consumption. The only downside is it's only got one network port. But I think this is the kind of thing that people might have lying around after an upgrade and might be interested in trying building their own router for the first time. So I'm going to try and do this. And I think it should be a bit more straightforward than the junk build. Okay, so maybe a bit more like what people might consider they want to do. So, I'm going to need some bits and pieces to put this together. Um, I'm going to use a home plug for a network, a power lead, an HDMI cable, although I want it to run headless when it's completed. But on startup and installation, it will be useful to have a video out, I think. I'm very much hoping that this uh, PC will be able to boot from USB. If you remember with my junk build, that was one of the problems I had, is I, I couldn't boot from a USB stick. So this one I'm hoping will be able to do that. Here's the USB stick. I don't know who gave me that. A mouse, and I think that's probably everything I need apart from a cup of coffee. Okay, we're good to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a look inside. I'll probably um, take out anything unnecessary. I have this fly swat just in case I get attacked. And... Um, We'll take it from there. So let's pop open the lid and see what's going on. Oh no, before I do that, I solved the problem of the single network port on this computer by going on eBay and buying a server pool Quadnic Intel server card, a second hand one. I think it was £18. Um, so I'm hoping that this will work for me to give me the extra four network ports. I'll make this into a real router then. Obviously, with four network ports plus the onboard, that's five. You know, that's going to be excellent. So here we have, I hope, a ready-to-go second-hand Intel quad port card. Okay, usual unwrapping problems. The reason I went for an Intel one is because, um, from what I've read, they are widely compatible with OPN Sense, as long as you get the right one, obviously. And um, compatibility with the FreeBSD base OS of OPN Sense uh, is very important. Yeah. Quad port. Okay. Looks in good nick. And I'm expecting it to go well. Fantastic. Actually, although I did my research thoroughly before I bought the card, um, and I was right, I bought the right card. I didn't really realize that you could use a PCI one times or four times in a 16 times slot and it will work fine. And there was a moment of panic just during the course of this build where I thought it wasn't going to work because I'd got the wrong card. Um, but that was a good thing to know actually because um, if you've got a 16 time PCI slot, um, you may not have run out of PCI slots because you can put a one times or a four times or an eight times card in that slot and it should work okay, which was news to me. That's a TV card. I'm going to get rid of that. And now it's time to pop in my network card. Okay, I think I'm going to have to fiddle around a bit with that first. I don't know how easy it is to see, but you can see the card sat there in the long blue slot. Okay, uh, installed, which is fantastic. And hopefully on the outside of the case we'll be able to see... Yeah. Four extra network ports. Fantastic, this is going to be great. It's going to be a proper router. Okay, we'll whiz through the... putting the lid back on. By the miracle of video editing, I actually went back in and stuck an SSD in after this because I just decided that it would be a cool thing to have in there. 
um, but I'm not going to show you all that again. We'll uh, we'll pretend that we did it all in one go and that I didn't forget the first time around. How's that? Okay, now I'm going to try and see if I can fire things up, see what happens. Okay, I'm going to fiddle around in the BIOS now, see if I can get the, uh, the PC to boot from USB. And if I can manage that, then we should be in a good shape to install OPN Sense and boot to a USB stick. Yep, looking good. Okay, here's a memory stick I'm going to use. And maybe it's worth quickly showing where I got the installable image for OPN Sense from. So I'll type the web address into the show notes underneath this video. But basically, if you do a Google search for OPN Sense and click on the Downloads button, you've then got a couple of choices to make in terms of your architecture and the image type that you want. I'm going for a full install on my SSD, so I'm not going to go for the nano version, and I want a VGA out version as well. Even though I'm going to run it headless, on the, at the install stage, I might as well use a video card on my computer to have a, have a look at what's going on. So I click the download button, and down it comes. That's basically it. Very straightforward. Once you've downloaded your image, you can then follow the instructions on the website to install it to a USB stick. My plan is to boot to the USB stick and then install from the USB stick onto my SSD. Although you can, if you choose, use a nano edition and just run it off a USB stick if you want. Um, but as you can see, what I'm doing is using Rufus here to write it to USB and then I'm going to do an install later. Um, we should be ready to boot up using our... USB stick. Okay. This looks like success, maybe? One of the nice things about the FreeBSD base of this system is just how stable it is. My other PFSense router is just incredibly stable. It's never crashed. Uh, and has run flawlessly for months at a time. Now what you get is all this gobbledygook that uh, you get on boot up. I don't really know what it is, but you can see within the text it recognizing various parts of my hardware and booting up. Obviously under normal circumstances you won't see any of this because your router will be running headless. You won't have a video card out to a screen on it. And um, all that will happen is that uh, the router will boot up like any normal router would, and the way you would access it is through the GUI. So let's have a look at that now by typing in the default GUI IP address and logging in as root. And just in case it's not obvious to anybody, I'm on my PC now, connected in via one of the network ports on the router, and I'm accessing it like you would do from a normal computer in your home. And here we are. When you get there and you log in initially, what you get is this startup wizard that helps you configure your um, your WAN connection and set up your network. It's quite helpful. I'll be connecting um, this router to my one of my internet connections using PPPoE and using a modem to do that. OPN Sense. Um, this is my first experience of it. I like it a lot. It reminds me a lot of PFSense actually, although I know that the fork has now deviated a long way from the original PFSense and I think was it MonoWall before that code? Anyway, it's got the firmware updates that you can do automatically from the GUI. It's got the packages and plugins that look familiar to me like Squid and other things like that. I like the interface actually better than the PFSense interface. It's got a more conventional menu style um, interface and it's got the same dashboard that I like from PFSense um, but actually with better compatibility for hardware than um, what I've seen in the PFSense unit. For example it will show the CPU temperatures here without hacking the sort of base text files which um, my PFSense date router will not do. Okay so overall I really like OBN Sense and actually I think if I was doing a new build again I'd probably be going in this direction. 
Although, obviously, I still really like PF Sense as well. I think they're both great choices. I have also found that there's a lot more help online and just general Googling around for PF Sense and OPN Sense. Simply, I think, because OPN Sense is that much newer and as yet less widely distributed. Although I think with time that will change. And the documentation on the OPN Sense website is pretty good. Okay, let me clarify a few things first and then sum up with some positives and negatives of uh, what I got out of this video. The things to clarify are, firstly, um, in case you aren't aware, this kind of router doesn't have a modem or wireless capability built into it. Um, both are possible, but in general you're probably going to need an external modem if you've got an ADSL type connection, for example, the way I do. And if you want to add wireless to this, then you'll need a wireless adapter and some time to spend setting that up. It can be done, but it's not super straightforward, especially as the compatibility of FreeBSD with wireless chipsets and cards is not that good, so you need to go for particular brands and do your research. Um, if your old PC only has one network port, one NIC, then it's not easy to do. It is possible, but it's not easy. Really, you're looking for one with a minimum of two network ports. Some other boards do have two network ports on them. Worth checking. And buying a four-port PCIe network card, if you can get one like mine, which is a server pool, eBay is full of them. They're cheap and they work really well. Um, just make sure that inside your old computer you've got the right kind of slot. Do your research. Okay, those are the couple of things I wanted to clarify. Let's sum up. So, as you can see, this build was a lot easier than both the junk build that I did, which had much older and uh, hardware with more compatibility issues, and the custom build that I did using the PC Engine's APU2 hardware, um, it was a bit more complex, um, it was headless, it had no VGA output, so it was a little bit more complicated. This was pretty easy, there was a little bit of fiddling around in the background, but in general, most moderately computer and technical um, people could do it without any problems at all. OPN Sense and PF Sense are free, and they're both brilliant for home users. The downside being, of course, that you have to configure them yourself. Um, your router will be powerful. If you're using a PC built within the last few years, um, you're almost certainly going to end up with a router that's far more powerful than almost anything you could buy on the market unless you go crazy and spend a massive amount of money. And with modern high-speed connections like gigabit connections, you're going to have a router that's going to be able to keep up with your connection. And I increasingly talk and meet with a lot of people who have got very fast connections and very bad routers that cannot cope with the speed and routing burden. They don't have strong enough CPUs. And as we know, consumer routers tend to be built with pretty wimpy hardware. Even the most expensive ones will probably not touch what uh, you're seeing in this video. Okay, on the negative side, so there's a lot of positives before I move on then. Um, on the negative side, you'll need some level of technical understanding to do this. It's not plug and play. Configuring OPN or PF Sense is not super straightforward. It took me quite a long time to work out how to get my extra LAN ports, my extra NIC points to work by bridging um, across to the LAN 1 port and various other configuration things in the GUI. So you need to be prepared to do some Googling to learn the system. But when you do, it gives you so much more possibilities to do a good job of managing your data. I use my PF Sense router as a web filter to protect my family from nasty stuff on the internet and it does that fantastically well, better than anything I've seen commercially available other than the paid for services you see on the internet. The other thing is, if you're using a great big PC like I've got, you really want somewhere to hide it. You know, you don't want that sat proudly on your sort of uh, um, table in the middle of your living room. If you've got somewhere where you can put it discreetly away, especially somewhere out the way, because it makes a little bit of noise, it's not tremendously noisy, um, then it's something to consider anyway, because most PCs do come in quite big boxes and they aren't really that beautiful. So overall, this has been by far the easiest DIY router build I've done. It's one of the most powerful, it's certainly more powerful than the one that I built using custom parts that cost me over 200 pounds. 
and I'm very pleased with the outcome and impressed with OPN Sense and I'll be looking into OPN Sense more in the future. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got an old PC, a USB stick and some time on your hands, why not give it a go? And I think that's probably where I'll leave it. See you guys.